Once we have created an effective assessment process in line with the intended learning outcomes, after having chosen the most appropriate test to observe the student's performance and after identifying criteria, indicators and scores, another important thing we should not ignore is feedback. That is what comes back to the students after the assessment. The quality of the feedback is a key element of the learning process, both when we're talking about formative assessment, which happens daily, and summative assessment, where we'll provide feedback on the level of performance that students have achieved in relation to the intended learning outcomes. Feedback, depending on the situation, can be expressed to individual students, small groups, or can become a collective moment during class. The teacher will decide, based on the stage within the course and the specific resources and context, which mode to choose. The important thing is that feedback should be considered a key element of the process on which the educator should invest time and resources. The fact that the quality of the feedback is strongly connected to the quality of the learning experience is shown by various studies. A few decades ago, Hattie demonstrates the strong correlation between the quality and the frequency of the feedback and the results of students. More recently, Ramsten highlighted how there is a very strong correlation between quality and frequency and the feedback and the perceived quality of the course. In practice, every time a course is negatively considered by students, there is also a negative specific perception in terms of quality of feedback and vice versa. Every time a course is evaluated positively, we have a positive assessment of the quality of the feedback. The topic of feedback seems to be the only stable significant marker that identifies with a high level of likelihood which courses are perceived positively and negatively by students. To be effective, however, the feedback should be, have certain characteristics. First of all, it should be provided promptly and often. Often, because within the dynamic of teaching and learning, the students should try to give a performance to which the teacher then should provide feedback. Promptly, because when I carry out a task, a problem, a presentation, or any kind of performance in a given moment, receiving feedback very late in the time doesn't allow me to understand if the learning process is following the proper path, so it should be often and quickly. It should also allow students to understand clearly at what level they position relatively to the intended performance. Am I actually at the highest intended level? Am I at least at an acceptable level? If I am not at an acceptable level, then why? A good feedback should let students know what they can do to correct the learning process or further improve it. With these three characteristics, we can effectively create a meaningful feedback. There is an element that is even more qualitative, which is perhaps the most important. 
That is the fact that feedback should also support and foster self-esteem, not exclusively underline the issues, the mistakes, but also focus on students' strengths. Carol Dweck at Stanford University made a very interesting consideration with her growing mindset model, a perspective of potential growth and development of the abilities, knowledge and competencies of students. Through her studies, she highlighted how learning situations in which teachers encourage the creation of a growing mindset effectively favor the achievement of the best results. It may sound intuitive, because when we open someone up to the hope that they can achieve better results, we automatically put them in the condition to deploy all the resources they possess in that direction. It's not so easy to put that into feedback practice because we often limit ourselves to underlying everything that has not worked out. We don't spend enough time on the encouragement of those positive potentials that could help our students enter a positive perspective. Let's not forget that in teaching practice, we say that the score cancels the feedback. Often, when the students see a score, they don't think about the feedback anymore. They don't think about the qualitative message that relates to that score. This is why it is particularly important to use a feedback throughout the whole teaching and learning process, in particular when there is no score. Feedback can therefore become the main focus. It can become a key message to guide the progress of students. Another important question, especially in large classes, is how to create a context where detailed, frequent and timely feedback is sustainable for the educator? If I have 120 students, how can I give them frequent feedback in a sustainable way? A useful tool that can make feedback more sustainable, even in large classes, is the grading rubric that we have already talked about. This means that when we are creating a system of criteria, indicators and different levels for each indicator, we can ease the evaluation process even with a high quantity of papers to review. We can provide feedback in a very rich and articulated way, providing clear indication to the students on their strengths and also on their weaknesses. Another family of tools that can help manage detailed and articulated feedback, even in a large class, are students' response systems, the online tools that allow us to create tests, quizzes, problems and exercises. The majority of these tools allows us, in fact, to include not only tasks, but also feedback. It corresponds both to the correct and the wrong answers. It can give indications on the content that needs to be reviewed, on exercises that need to be done, and on activities that need to be strengthened in order to respond in a more appropriate way to those specific requests. Let's try to briefly sum up. Feedback, as we have seen, is a fundamental element in the teaching and learning experience. For it to be effective, however, it's really important that it is frequent, timely and therefore connected to when the performance has happened. Feedback must be expressed clearly so that students can properly understand what level they have reached compared to the performance intended by the teacher. But especially, it should support the student's motivation and it should be encouraging.